Hi, everybody. How are you today? I'm Patricia, located in Chicago, and I'm here with Marsha. Marsha is located in the Amsterdam area. And hi, Marsha. How are you? Hi, Patricia. I'm good. How are you? Good. Marsha is one of my practitioners and also does coaching for your journey. We want to talk to you about some stuff because Marsha is also a mom. I'm a mom. There's a lot of moms on this journey. There's a lot of women who want to be moms. And a lot of times the things that stump us is not just ourselves. It's our kids. It's helping to guide ourselves and our kids. A little bit about Marsha. She has been able to quit the rat race. What does that mean? She got away from uh, the corporate environment and um, a lot of the stuff that happens off is politics. Now, mind you, this was years ago, and so did I. I worked at places, we once were in such a gangbuster time where I worked, it was like 90 hours a week. And while we were compensated for that, that was a lot of stress. And I do see people being stressed all over. Parents are being stressed. You know, when you're a single mom, you don't always have that partner to rely on, but we have developed ways to support you with this. And that's kind of what we want to talk about here. So as parents, um, whether you're a single mom or a single dad or whatever the home environment is, there's a way for it to get better. And even the kids, because we were just talking, Marsha and I, about how this thing with these upcoming kids, they're going to have the solutions, but we have to be able to get our own ascension, get our twin flame, and get our kids also because they're not going to trip through the karma that we have to, had to. They are here to do some of the solutions, right? So Marsha, we were just talking about this. Yes, yeah. exactly. Marsha's really good at dreams and dream interpretation. So tell a little bit about some of your dream. So um, on this journey, I used to have like a lot of dreams, but every time since I've been working with Patricia, things have been changing. So I was able to quit the rat race and um, after after my divorce and pick myself up again. And every time on this journey, you reinvent yourself. And most of these things come um, through other means than the mind wants to uh, make it up. So for me, it's in dreams. So a lot of my dreams are almost fantastical or like movies, very detailed. And I've learned to always have a notebook with me. So when I wake up, I can write these things down. And I can tell you that most of these very detailed dreams at some point manifest into the physical world. And um, at first I didn't notice until something was quite familiar. I had a dream about finding a new job like in a cheese shop. And I was like, this is really weird. Why would I work in a cheese shop? And I actually got a job for like six months in a cheese no, shop. No, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and it was very random because it was after I quit my job and then I told myself, I want three months of doing nothing. And then two days Later was my birthday and my daughter said, let's go into this cheese shop. We know this guy. And I was like, really? And she said, yeah, let's go into there. And we walked into there and this guy I know, and he said, do you know of any mom friends that's looking for like a part-time job? And I was like, I said, maybe me, <laughs> but I don't have any uh, credentials for working. And he said, that's fine. We'll just have a coffee. And then three days later, I had a job. So, so those things come to me through dreams. And also, I'm finding kids know a lot more than we give them credit for. Because 
Oh, my yeah. daughter is usually somewhere pushing me in a, into a certain direction and then I don't want to do it and then do it anyway. And it usually happens that there's some kind of meeting with someone that I'm supposed to meet that will get me further into the next thing. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about some kids are old souls and some kids are new souls. You can see it on the face sometimes that, you know, they're almost shell-shocked at being born here on earth and other people, other kids are just like, oh, I got this. They're still kids and they still need their parents' guidance, right? Yeah. But there's like a whole new way of guiding them and disciplining them or keeping them on track, helping them to not you know, jump too far ahead or be precocious or get in trouble with all of the pitfalls here on earth, as I like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were just talking about how some people think like, well, you know, Gen Z or the Zeners who aren't too Zen, because frankly, if you ask me with all the jump scares and all the other stuff, I have some of these like discussions with people. We had this in my childhood and we had that. And I'm like, well, I had the Vietnam War and we had an assassination and we had this and we had, um, you know, stagflation and the recession and, you know, uh, white collar recession and, you know, all this stuff. Every generation has its stuff. And I feel that the upcoming generations, and I think your dreams are showing you this, are the, the ones with the solutions can they be guided properly and can they be safe and can they be nurtured? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I believe and I feel that I feel that the kids they do know at some level, but they're still children and they don't they don't fully grasp it yet. But I have these moments, for instance. I know that children need their their playtime and to be outside. And um, it always takes me a lot to drag my daughter into the forest because I know it will do her good. But as mm -hmm. soon as we get there, they're able to let go of their daily things and their thoughts. And it doesn't take long, mm -hmm. like five, th that they can like decompress, start running and playing. And then within a few moments, they start talking about things that they notice maybe, or, and those, I love to talk, but those are the moments that I know I have to shut my mouth because mm -hmm. what comes up is something so prof profound almost, and they, they can hold so such wisdom even at such a young age, and um, but those are also the moments that show me that we cannot let them just do their thing and be little adults by themselves because they still need the rules and regulations. And I'm sure my daughter does because she tends to, you know not run take a run with it as soon as she can so um yeah. i always try to tell her it's for her own good and she she doesn't really like it but oh kids are always pushing the envelope and pushing yeah. the boundaries and pushing their parents in general and it's not that we have to push back but they feel safer when they know that where the edges are they know yeah. where the boundaries are they know that they're safe. They know that we're looking out for them. Sometimes they can be our accountability partner, but a lot of times we are still being the parent. That's something that I see on this journey that people confuse their child's gifts with the ability to be an adult. Yeah. And they are not adults. They're not little adults. They're still in a maturing process. They're still here for integration and like, yeah, some karma. It's up to us as the parents to get rid of that karma too. And I'll, you've done that, like, for example, after, um, you know, with her father, there was yeah. a lot of karma to do. 
I've had to do that with the father of my son. And people don't realize how much is involved to really disentangle yourself from it, get to a neutral ground, which is up leveled, and to really let your let it go from you, like really where it is detached like a cable. You're not caught up in those root things because it does affect their DNA. So you're now making the positive turns in the DNA. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with you <clears throat> about, uh, I can see since my daughter, she, she's older now, but since she was a little girl, how gifted she was. And, you know, it's easy to put them on a pedestal, but I was, <laughs> I was raised with the quite a strong hand and very strict and the older I get the more I'm being told I'm like my mother and while I used to hate that when I was younger and now I'm proud of it and I'm like no I'm standing my ground <laughs> I'm standing yeah. my ground I'm still your mother I'm still the adult this is how we're going to do it and she might hate me for it for a little while but um She's learning how it's important that she cannot just, you know, do anything that wells up. Then there's a time and place for doing these things. Yeah. And th this teaches them the emotional regulation, the impulse control that comes from that frontal lobe. It is so important as they head into puberty. I found this out with my son that it can be very impulsive when the hormones are surging. There's power surges, there are hunger and appetite surges, and everything's going like this, your kid can put you on their roller coaster, emotionally, physically, mentally, you'll worry about them. And naturally, a lot of them are coming into different temptations. And some of those are at an adult level. So how do we guide them? We have to do some discipline. Yeah. Um, Sometimes we have to say no as much as we would like to indulge them. Yeah. And another thing I want to talk about, because a lot of times, like our generations, once before we were hit, we were hit as kids. Um, I, I've come to learn through doing this work that this actually can stunt the growth and the expansion of the chakras. There are other more effective ways of doing things and what I teach and what um, Marsha does, we do things from another level entirely. This means spirit to spirit. This means where we are kind of orchestrating things, I would say. Would, wouldn't you say it feels more like an orchestration? Yeah, and it, it was strange at the beginning for me, but um, to get used to it. Because your mind's still like, uh, there's an issue and I need to solve it. So that's the whole thing I learned in the corporate world as well. It's like, we go, go, go. So it, it was very, at the moment, counterintuitive to do that. But that was just because I was just unlearning the things myself. And But once I saw how easy it was, to just talk to spirit to spirit and then seeing breakthroughs like like a dam breaking loose or something and it would there's just an ease to it and yeah, yeah almost I, like as easy as getting a job uh at the cheese yeah. shop yeah. Where, yeah yeah your wish is the command of your highest yeah exactly spending. and then you just have to get yourself out of the way or your ego mind <laughs> to have things don't be done differently. And I also feel that's the way how, how I, how I come to a place with ease with my ex-husband and his new family. And then we could, we were just able to spend an early Christmas together without me try trying to shout into the sky like why this no it was it was the first time and uh it's been hard work to get there but it's possible and especially with with your modality and everything that 
but we learn in there as my daughter calls it when I tell her how to deal with her anger or whatever it's like yeah life skills <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it goes beyond life skills and I just want to say this to everyone here's why it goes beyond life skills because yes these are life skills we all should have and not everyone does and not everyone like Marsha takes the time to like reboot, rewire, redo it, do it better, be a better parent than our parents could be. We want to keep everyone out on the outer rings of our unified selves so that when we are together, the children aren't an issue. The exes aren't an issue. Like every, the entire world, the entire planet is not an issue. We have fixed it yeah, or set it up. Yeah. It does feel like that. It feels like a huge cleanup. Like, yeah. it feels like everything, like I'm constantly sweeping the path. It's like, no, it's going to change. This needs to be sw swept away. This needs to be swept away. And, um, and things come back better and people do better. Yes, they do. Yes. So um, I hope that you will work with Marsha, join our support group for starting in January of 2024, have a session, really understand that this is here to stay, your ascension, your twin flame journey, it's here to stay, there is a new way and you will be much happier in it. So reach out to us with questions, if you have questions, you know, if this is clicking with you and you're a single mom, say hey in the comments section and say hi to Marsha. And thanks so much, Marsha. We'll, we'll be doing some more stuff. So thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.